All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today at our uh, Friday plenary, the last day of open ed. I can't believe we are already at the end. Um, it feels like it, it totally flew by. Um, so I hope everyone was enjoying themselves this week. Uh, we wanted to close out the conference with uh, a, a more interactive uh, and social sort of plenary session to kind of bookend what we did at the beginning of the conference. Um, so at the beginning of the conference, we, we had a bit of an interactive discussion about what does open education mean to you? And now that we've been through the session or been through the conference um, and, and are at the end, we want to bookend that with a, a little bit of a discussion between you know, members of the organizing committee about uh, what is the future of open education. And I'm realizing I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Haley Babb. I'm an open education coordinator with Spark. Um, and I've been uh, on the conference team uh, doing some of the, the uh, help with organizing so far. So with me today, I have uh, Daniel Williamson and Nicole Allen, um, who are also members of the organizing committee who are going to chat with us first and foremost, a little bit about how we got here. Um, what has the process been like for the organizing committee over the past year um, since we've you know, uh, sort of uh, agreed to take on the organizing? Um, and how did we make the decisions uh, that uh, you know, brought us to where we are today um, at the conference? Um, so after a little bit of backgrounder, uh, Emily Reagan and I, who's also a member of the steering committee, hello Emily, uh, are going to lead us through some Mentimeter questions to sort of prompt you uh, to tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like and to sort of get you thinking about some feedback for uh, both next year's conference and uh, some long-term planning. So I realized that not everybody uh, at the conference can be with us today. Um, but we want to make sure that we hear from everyone. So we are, after the session and, and uh, in the days following the conference, going to be sending out sort of a more comprehensive survey where we'll be asking everyone to please share with us, uh, you know, their thoughts about how things went, what we can be doing to improve for next year, um, but also, you know, what we can be thinking about as we go into the long-term strategic planning process of the conference. So today is meant to be sort of a little bit of a taste of that survey. Um, we realized that, you know, after the conference is done, you go out and you usually, you know, are by yourself when you're filling out that survey. But we wanted to host as much as we can, you know, without being able to meet in person, a community discussion about this topic um, and give folks a, an opportunity to interact with each other um, about these topics, which are really, really important. So after we lead you through some Mentimeter questions, we are going to be breaking into some breakout rooms. Um, and at that point, you will be um, in a room with a conference volunteer who's going to be uh, sort of leading your discussion. Um, and we're hoping that this can be sort of a two-fold approach. One is to, uh, you know, have a discussion about uh, the future of the Open Education Conference, but also to use this as an opportunity to continue to build connections with one another. Um, so when you're in these breakout rooms, please do be sure that you're introducing yourself, um, sharing a little bit about yourself and, and how you came to, to be at the Open Education Conference, um, and then share your thoughts. Uh, your, your conference volunteer is going to be taking notes throughout the, the breakout room session, so just be aware of that. Um, it won't be identifying, nor will our Mentimeter questions um, be identifying as well, so please do share, you know, whatever you are comfortable with. Um, and you're welcome to stay for the, the breakout discussions for as long or as short as you like. We'll keep them open until the end of the plenary session. But if you feel like you've gotten out everything you have to say, um, you know, you're welcome to take a little bit of an extended break. But the door is open for you to have that discussion. Um, so that's a bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, Nicole, Emily, Daniel, anything else I should mention before we get started? I don't think so. Oh, okay, great. Well, at this time, I guess I'll hand it over uh, to Nicole uh, and Daniel, um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about uh, what the past year has been like for us as an organizing committee um, and what to expect in the future. Sure thing. So uh, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Nicole Allen, Director of Open Education for Spark, and uh, as a member of the steering committee and, and sort of the operations lead for the conference, uh, I'm, I'm going to 
uh, work with Daniel, the, the fiscal and legal lead for the conference to tell the story a little bit of, of how this all came to be. Uh, it was so exciting to see on Monday at the opening plenary session that when we asked the question of uh, how, how many times participants had attended the open education conference, the overwhelming majority of people uh, are attending for the first time. And I think, you know, some of those people are maybe completely new to open education or the open education movement, or perhaps are have been working on these issues for a long time, but had never been able to go to the open education conference because of the, the cost of attendance and, and being able to travel or you know, even the fact that it's it, it's held in a specific country uh, that um, and not being able to, to cross the border to actually get there. So uh, I, I think that that was really telling to me just just how large the broader open education community is. And when we're thinking about something that's called the open education conference, uh, what 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 does that mean? So. I guess starting at the beginning, the, the history of this conference, uh, it, it was, uh, or, the first year it was organized was 2003. Uh, it was organized by David Wiley. And uh, for the last 16 years, uh, he was the organizer. And at Open Ed 19 in Phoenix, he announced on the first day of the conference that he would not be organizing the conference in the future. And uh, that announcement, uh, left space for the community to be able to step up and have conversations about, uh, you know, what what this conference should be in the future. So, <laughs> uh, I guess the the story of this year's conference began at that announcement when there were a lot of questions going around the room about, you know, what what will next year look like and who will step up and and who will be involved and, and how do we do it in a way that incorporates uh, the community that this conference uh, you know, is, is, in, is perhaps intended to serve or seeks to serve. So uh, actually right at the conference, a, a, a group of uh, people who were there uh, held a meeting to talk about some, some of the bigger questions. And, and in fact, uh, some of the questions that we're, we're still gonna be discussing later today. And uh, uh, what came out of that conversation was sort of a, a recognition that uh, it, there was sort of a clean slate and there needed to be an open call for participation. So that's what happened. Uh, a group of, of community members got together and wrote up uh, an open call for people who are interested in helping to organize the conference for next year to step forward. And actually over 300 responses came into that form uh, and it was actually all open. So it's um, still out there. Uh, and uh, it was exciting to see sort of the, the momentum around that. Uh, so it, it definitely, what it, what it said is, is that, you know, there definitely needed to be a conference this year, but the question was, you know, who's gonna organize it and, and how is that organizing process gonna look? So uh, four of the organizations that responded to that form are the four organizations that ended up stepping forward to run the conference uh, today. So uh, those organizations are Spark, uh, my organization, which is the operations lead for the conference, OpenStax, which took on the, the legal and fiscal responsibility for the conference. And, and that was really important because it, at the time we were thinking about this as an in-person conference where you have to sign a, you know, a huge contract with a, a hotel to secure the space and take on a, a large amount of risk. And then uh, our, our uh, third and fourth partner are the Colorado Department of Higher Ed OER Council, which is gonna be the local host in 2020 and um, perhaps wasn't the local host, but was, uh, you know, the Colorado team was heavily involved in organizing and running this year's conference. And then the University System of Maryland, uh, their Kerwin Center uh, stepped forward to be the hosts for the 2021 conference. 
So our four organizations got together and put together a proposal. And the proposal was for a two year transition plan where we agreed to come together and put forward our organizational resources to organize the conference in 2020 and 2021 in order to provide space and time for the community to uh, have the important conversations about what does this conference need to be, you know, who does it serve, and uh, what, what needs are there that uh, a conference like this can meet. So that's what we've been doing. <laughs> um, we put out the proposal for endorsement and uh, over a hundred community members and, and a, a dozen or so organizations endorsed it. So, so we move forward and, um, and this was all in January. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's where I think Daniel is gonna pick up on the story. Yeah, so first let me say it's been just an incredible honor to be able to help this community, um, and I know all of the orgs that um, stepped up to help organize. Um, we feel a great um, trust from the community yeah. to be able to do this. So thank you so much for that. And from the very beginning, though, all of our organizations said this is not for our organizations. This is for the community. And so the biggest um, the biggest goal that we had was to start working together to. Uh, allow space for new leaders to step up, um, not just have the existing old guard there preserving what was, but really thinking about how do we reinvent op the open education community. And so we put out an open call for steering committee members, um, the organi organizing partners, the four that um, Nicole just mentioned came together and selected uh, the first few members. I think there are first uh, four members of that. Uh, the, the steering committee, and then we went and worked through the applications uh, to form the full steering committee, which you can see on the open stack or open open education conference.org site. Um, we then worked really closely with the steering committee uh, to start planning what the conference would look like. And as Nicole mentioned back then, we were thinking that this was going to be an in-person conference. So we got super busy really quickly because finding a venue that could support a thousand person conference within a year is not an easy feat. <laughs> in fact, we had no idea what we were gonna be able to be up against. Uh, luckily, we were able to find, luckily, I should put that in quotes. Luckily, we were able to find a venue uh, and sign the contract. In fact, Nicole and I were sitting at the, um, the Phoenix, uh, not Open Ed Conference, but the the um, the Maricopa OER Maricopa, Arizona OER Arizona Conference, feverishly going through the contract and s signing. At the same time, I'm saying to her, you know, have you heard about this coronavirus thing, this COVID nineteen thing? Have you gotten your mask yet? Um, and she was saying, you're crazy. There's nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> and so we signed the contract. And then as everybody knows, the pandemic happened. Uh, we started having this, a discussion about whether or not to continue to plan to hold an in-person conference, weighing the cost to cancel the venue that we had just signed a big contract with, or whether we should write it out and see if the pandemic would uh, pass, or whether we should just pause and, uh, and make this a virtual conference. Um, ultimately though, falling back on a core value that we've had as the, the steering committee is to listen. And so falling back on this core value of listening, we decided not to move to, um, uh, uh, or not to maintain an in-person conference, but to move to a fully online conference because the community was telling us that that was what was needed. Um, we heard that attending an in-person conference this year, even if we were able to travel, um, you know, without, uh, legal implications or risks to our health was probably going to pose too large of a financial burden for most. Um, and so from there, um, we, we zeroed in on having a, an amazing online conference. We pulled together just tons and tons of teams. The steering committee uh, put out another call for volunteers, formed five different teams, the program committee, the online committee, the communications committee, a dedicated diversity, equity, and inclusion committee as well as the Future of Open Ed Committee. 
And all of these teams did just absolutely amazing work. I, I think, Nicole, it was something like, what, 300, 400 people that were volunteering, something, some crazy number. It, it, depending on how you count it and, and how good I am at deduplicating, yes. <laughs> and so it, we, it's just been amazing to see the community coming together to truly govern and build this conference. And I'm sure it's a week we've all enjoyed. And now we kind of turn our, our look to what happens after this. Nicole. Sorry, I, I muted myself and I'm searching for the unmute button. Um, so as, as we start thinking about sort of what's, what's next uh, for the conference, as we head into 2021, there are gonna be sort of parallel processes happening. So one is that we are of course going to continue thinking about or <laughs> continue forward on planning the 2021 conference and are gonna be seeking uh, uh, new members of, of planning teams and, and, and new, new people to be involved in, in helping to shape that and, and hopefully including new voices and, and, and helping to build on the momentum that, that's here. Uh, but also alongside that, engaging in a strategic planning process where we will figure out what the future is going to be because uh, our organizations, the four of us, have agreed to, to sign on for, for two years uh, and that expires at the end of 2021 and our goal is truly to be able to hand this off to a community governed process. Uh, and I think there are a lot of questions about what that should and can look like. And that's one of the reasons that we chose reimagining open education is the theme for this year, because it is gonna take a reimagining of what convenings are. And, <laughs> uh, and, and, and that's meant in a, in a very literal sense because of all of the different ways that, that we're interacting with us and, and the likely long lasting changes that the pandemic is likely to have and how we uh, communicate with each other and how we convene. But also in thinking about as the open education community uh, continues to grow, what that future can be. Yeah. I think it's important that this not just become another conference owned and managed by a single entity, uh, but rather something that is truly governed and supported by the community it serves. Um, there is still a lot of questions. There's still a lot that needs to be figured out to successfully transition the ownership, if you will, of this conference over to a fully commu community governed approach. A lot of the questions that come to my mind as someone who's very centered on operations and even uh, finance and legal stuff is, so who takes responsibility? Who owns that? Um, who's a member? Who's not a member? These are hard questions that our community needs to grapple with um, to really figure out how we handle that sort of tra transition. And so we want to hear your feedback today about the transition, about what it should look like and what we should keep in mind for next year's conference. And, and in short, you know, what is the future of the Open Ed Conference? And I think that's exactly where Emily and Haley are gonna sort of start getting us primed for um, with a few Mentimeter questions. Yeah, thanks Nicole and Daniel. That's really fantastic background to have and, and a great primer for us going into our Mentimeter um, exercise today. Uh, so uh, Emily, if you would be, or Nicole, uh, if one of you would be able to uh, get us going in Mentimeter, that would be fantastic. We good? Yeah, so we'll just start right at the, the first question. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Awesome. Okay, so I'm sure many of you are now very familiar with Mentimeter. Um, we've been using it a lot in some of our activities, but if you're not, um, here are some instructions for getting set up. I'm also going to post um, a direct link 
uh, in the chat as well, if that helps. Um, we find that it's best if you uh, access Mentimeter either from a separate browser or device to be able to participate fully. Um, this is going to be a, uh, you know, we would like to have as much participation as possible. So we, uh, I'm gonna give it a minute to make sure that everybody's fully set up um, before we move along. Uh, and just a reminder as well, um, Mentimeter does uh, provide like a, a good level of anonymity. Um, we are certainly not going to be going back, uh, you know, into the answers and, and doing anything to identify folks. Um, but please just, you know, bear in mind, um, you, you know, your own privacy and what you're comfortable with um, in terms of answering questions. Yeah, and, and while people are setting up, I, I, I know that we have um, Spencer Spencer and MJ are here from uh, Colorado and Maryland. And, uh, you know, after what Daniel and I said, uh, maybe if, if there's anything either of you would like to add to the story or thinking about uh, as we head into next year and anything that, that folks here should uh, should hear. I think just along the lines of the story, it's just uh, part of the story is just everybody involved. And I, you had put in the in the chat the committee members, and that was just such a you know organic way of this happening, of this conference coming together. And so for me, it was really inspiring. And I know in Colorado, we were we were stoking a lot of enthusiasm. And when I scroll through there and I see the number of volunteers from Colorado, from people who are doing you know, reviews to moderating sessions to leading different committees. It's just like, uh, it's ex it's exactly kind of the essence of what I, I thought this involvement would be. And so it was really exciting that, you, you know, despite the challenges you all mentioned, we were still able to embrace that and still feel like we, we're we um, contributing in a way. So uh, we're really grateful for that. And I, I'm excited to see kind of the outcomes of today and, um, you know, next year with Marilyn involved and um, and kind of what what people have to say, what's on their minds after a week full of of content this week, and you know what we, what we can do in the future. Yeah, and I would just add, uh, I said it yesterday during one of the tea times that we have big shoes to fill here in Maryland, following uh, Colorado's lead, and we're looking forward to 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 hosting next year in whatever format that may end up taking. Um, and building on the momentum and the good work that's happened so far this year. Um, I, I, I continue to marvel, Nicole, that uh, uh, with Sparks leadership and this great uh, program team that uh, this all came together as quickly as it did. And, and it, you know, it's not just that it was patched together. I mean, this has been a really good, very interactive conference um, and, and in an entirely new format that nobody really was prepared for even you know, eight months ago. So congratulations. Yeah, well, we, we keep using the phrase that it, it, it took a village and, and we will in, in our closing session in an hour and a half uh, be making sure to recognize all of the individuals who are involved as well. So so we'll, we'll make sure to, to also go through all of that again. I think the challenge for next year, your vision, Nicole, for having it in Maryland uh, in 2021 was uh, around being close to DC. So figuring out how we still capitalize on our locale to engage uh, some policymakers in a bigger way uh, will be an interesting challenge for us if we're, if we're still in this format. Yeah, well, and one of the exciting things, so I was in it for an open ed lobby day like we did in 2014. Uh, when the conference was in in Arlington, but the the thing is that uh, actually with uh, uh, over, over the past um, uh, nine months, advocacy has moved largely virtual, which I think is a really exciting and, and at least in the U.S. context, uh, a democratizing way to be able to engage in lobbying and advocacy that you know you don't need to fly to Washington D.C. and sit down with people in order to get access to them. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. All right. Okay, well, maybe we're ready for some questions. So we're warming up gently. <laughs> um, we have just some fun little pictures. And what are you planning to do this weekend? And maybe you want 
multiple things. I think we're limited to just one, <laughs> one option here. I'm hoping to do uh, multiple. And I think we'll have to allow the, the results to show here. Okay, I see a lot of us have some work catch up. <laughs> Definitely that's part of my upcoming weekend. Um, relaxing, that sounds fantastic. And something fun, I wanna do some happy dances. I honestly wanna watch a movie too, that's coming, coming in the rear here, but. Um, <laughs> I wanna be that floating hedgehog. That's, uh, well, <laughs> if you're looking for something to watch, there's over a hundred hours of recording from this conference. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's why movies are coming in behind. We've kind of been sitting in, a, in front of a screen all along, haven't we? Well, fantastic. <laughs> okay, well, good. I think we can move on. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just give a little bit of an introduction. So we're, uh, when we're going through our feedback today, we've kind of split it into two categories. Um, so firstly, we want to talk about how this conference went. What's your immediate feedback for what we could be doing better for next year? What went well this year? What can we improve upon? Um, and then later on, after we ask a couple questions on this topic, we'll be starting to think more big picture um, about the strategic planning process for 2021 and beyond. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through the next next few set of questions. So using only one word, what's been your biggest takeaway from the conference? Community. Awesome. I love that community is in the middle. Inspiration. Diversity, equity. Collaboration is up there. Oh, I just love these word clouds. <laughs> I love it. There's so much good stuff. This is great and it's still growing. Community staying strong at the middle. That's fantastic. Oh, oh. this is so wonderful. I see joy in there. I love that. Care, another big one. Pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is so nice. Super powerful. Thanks, everyone. Hope. Oh. Yeah, some of those key words staying nice and big in the middle community, equity, inspiration, inclusion. Love that. Student led. Love it. Yes. <laughs> and togetherness, despite the virtual nature, there's really been a, a sense of togetherness in that community that's right there in the center. Amazing. Great, well, thank you so much, everyone. This is really good data. I'm sorry, I missed the Among Us. Uh, there's always <laughs> gonna be something for next year. <laughs> awesome. Let's see, well, so let's move on perhaps to our next question, which will let you have a little bit of a longer response. And this is specifically, what is something that you learned at this year's conference that you will apply in the future? Advocacy. Advocacy, that's great. Nice. Courage to speak up about social justice. Just absorbing cross-institutional partnerships Consent for open, that's huge. Data privacy. And working with students and advocacy work. Oh, I see someone hoping to be a part of the committee next year. That's fantastic. I hope this, uh, if you're feeling inspired, we'll have some uh, some actionables for you at the end to sign up for more updates. 
progressive stacking. Yeah, so, so many places, the technical pieces, you know, assignments, but then also social justice. I feel like we've held so much here, so many different perspectives, not alone in anti-racist work, self-determination pedagogy, and then also copyright. Mm. Those are fantastic answers. Great. Well, I know we have a few, uh, a solid amount of questions lined up today. So we unfortunately won't get to read everyone's responses, but we'll certainly be going through it later and making sure that we incorporate as much as we can into our, our feedback. Uh, so our next question, what's something that you felt like was missing from the conference or that you would want more of in the future? Students, yes. <laughs> conference muffins. <laughs> Hugs, all oh. <laughs> wasn't in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Muffins, oh. not hugs. <laughs> Multiple hugs. Oh my gosh, all the hugs on here. And then, um, you know, the yoga, I know this isn't on here, but we need an hour for yoga next time. Mm -hmm. that, that went with the health related sessions. Oh, friends, it was wonderful. More of this. Aww. Lightning talks hard to engage with. That's good feedback. We want we want all the feedback. <laughs> Let us know if there's stuff that we can improve. More time. Nicole, can you share the time turner with the rest of us? I, <laughs> fortunately, I do not have that technology <laughs> because this conference would have turned me 70. <laughs> Swag. Two, yeah, two notes for swag. I saw, I think swag. Tiffany had the link for swag in the chat. But it's not complimentary swag. So that I know that's, <laughs> that's not quite well. The... Swag is paid for one way or another. Structured networking for introverts. I'm really interested in what that looks like. Well, Think about that. Regina, That's a good would one spiral to journal back. count as structured networking for introverts? Do you think? Say that again, Maha. Would spiral journal count as structured networking for introverts? I think so. Yeah. So that's coming so, up later today, right? Yep. It was finished like eleven thirty, just before oh, this. We already had it. Okay, I'm, I have time zone issues. <laughs> Thank you for leading that. We've had so many lovely different ways to connect, right? From that networking session on the first day through these awesome facilitated tea times. Let's see, so more midday yoga. Oh, uh, PK-12 sessions, absolutely. It could use growth, I, yes, absolutely. Um, slightly longer breaks. It was hard to fit in lunch and the self-care <laughs> that we need because of our FOMO, absolutely and more international perspectives. Mm. Stuff for beginners who have no support or money at their institution. A really welcoming on-ramp, I agree. That's a good one. Great. Well, this is really good feedback and I can't wait to go through all the answers afterwards. Maybe we'll move on to the next one. So how satisfied were you with this year's conference in terms of the amount of programming we had, the diversity of programming, and sort of the general accessibility of programming? So this is a sliding scale, um, but we'll have a, a comment box for some more uh, detailed feedback afterwards. The amount of programming is leading. <laughs> This was a full conference. There's really <laughs> no doubt about that. We packed it in. Awesome. This is good information. Thanks everyone for sharing your answers. Yes, it might be good to move to our next question. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So anything else you want to share about your experience at Open Ed 20? Hmm. And well, I'm not sure how long this particular Menti poll will remain open. We do have surveys that we'll be sending out. So you really will have another chance to share this type of information. Yeah, so just in case anyone's joining late, this is sort of a sampler of what we're going to be uh, sending out in our survey. Um, so you will have an opportunity to sort of sit and formulate your thoughts a little bit more and give us some more constructive feedback. Um, but for the purposes of today, we just wanted to, you know, do our best to facilitate a community conversation about this as best we can in a virtual setting. Um, so thanks for being here with us and, and being willing to partake in that conversation. Yes, and a lot of support for the virtual format. Someone says, please keep it digital. <laughs> First conference, oh. where I didn't wear shoes. Someone says, highlight of my term as a student government rep. That makes me so happy. Yeah, and I love Regina's energy too. Those of you who were at the Kara Oyaroki last night, oh, it was amazing. So next year, you know, you gotta, you gotta go, make time for that. Thank you to that person who, who just put that with four blue hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Lots of thank yous in the chat, that's great. I know we, we still have quite a lot of uh, questions to go through, so maybe we'll uh, move forward, you know, just for the purpose of trying to get through them all. Um, but thank you so much for, for giving us your feedback. All right, so that's that's uh, sort of it for now on, on last year's conference. And now we kind of want you to transition your thinking into more of a long-term vision for what this uh, what we want this conference to look like in the future. So, so rec- what? Oh, go ahead, Emily. Well, I was just gonna say, recognizing that there's so many different components of our open education community, and we might even say multiple open education communities that are coming together at this conference, we're wanting to know what you consider the open education community. And we see a lot of everyone. We want everyone. I love it. Yeah, so we're very inclusive with who we are including in our open education community. That's great. People and passion for a better world. I love that. Yeah, this is a hard question to answer. Educators and learners, everyone. Mm -hmm. More grad students, that's a good point. Focusing broadly international, indigenous views. I, it was an awesome set of plenary sessions yesterday. I just felt like my perspective was really um, widened. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, well, Great. thank you so much. We'll hop to the next question. Great. So building off of that first question, who's often left out of the broader open education community that we should more intentionally include? <laughs> students, students, students. <laughs> that is actually the president of my institution's like tagline. Students, students, students. That's what it's all about. Public librarians, K-12 folks, grad students, as well as just students generally. Ooh, general public. Mm -hmm. I see a comment in the chat that says folks outside the virtual world. <laughs> Lots of support for students. Absolutely. Instructors and faculty, that's great. Go 
Great. So library information science students, LIS. Okay, well, thank you. And I think we can probably move on. Oh, adjuncts, yes, it's another. Awesome. Great, We're probably ready for the next slide. Yeah, I just wanna say the black indigenous people of oh, color yeah. perspectives as well. That's one we hadn't. Marginalized creators, not just marginalized users. Oh, and people in local government, maybe state legislators. People of color not in academia. Okay. Oh, students with disabilities. Yeah, so, wow, this is great. Senior level university administrators. <laughs> Early education educators. Okay, this is, I know, this is fantastic. So I know we need to move on. <laughs> I just, I love all the. No, this is good, good information. Yeah, and inviting people involved in policy, perhaps even to attend the conference for free next year. That's an interesting idea. And I mean, one really big takeaway is the students, the students piece. And that's where we're going to have to put a lot of our thought and um, intentionality, I think, as we plan for next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do think, are we ready to move on, Haley? <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> Great, okay, so to what extent do you believe that diversity, equity, and inclusion should be at the center of the Future of Open Education Conference? Interested to see. Is uh -oh. it not working? We may oh, have no. had a malfunction. Oh. Ah! Oh my gosh, let's let's. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, apologies for that. <laughs> um, awesome. So we see a lot of comments in the chat for completely at the center. That's great. 100%. Yes, all in caps, big emphasis. Definitely centered. Someone said infused, I can see in the Zoom discussion. Yeah, infused throughout. I saw, is there a thousand percent option? <laughs> this is great. Well, I know Nicole's trying to troubleshoot. We're, 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 we're currently experiencing technical difficulties, please hold. <laughs> I'm glad you all still have the chat. So the, our conversation is continuing to move forward. Yeah, I know, truly the chat has been very informative. And um, so Nicole, worst case scenario is that we could move on to the next question. I think we do have some data here. Yeah, we've got a pretty resounding. Uh, one comment, possibly reframe this work um, towards a more anti-oppressive framework that talks about barriers and ways to break through those barriers. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna see if this works. And I'm not sure that it's working for me. Okay, well, okay. So I think we're moving on to the next question, but thank you all for, for giving us our feedback in the chat and apologies for, oh, is it working now, Anita? I guess, Nicole, you could check. We're getting, we already voted because we did submit last time when we weren't allowed to vote. So I guess maybe some people might be able to vote. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, maybe that's my problem as well. Okay, well, let us move on then. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I think we need to move on and apologies for this. Right. Okay, so now shifting to the idea of governance, um, what do you think the new community led governance model should look like? And then we're clear that EDI or DEI, however we want to say it, is to be foregrounded. So as far as community government governance, decentered and distributed, 
shared, led by EDI leaders, student representatives, an affordable individual membership. Haley, I'll let you have a turn. Yeah, diverse in all areas, ages, races, sexualities, et cetera. Flexible, a flexible model of governance, more diverse committee, uh, diverse participation roles involved, decentralized, but highly organized, more outside voices. Some people are doing the heavy lift, good feedback. Uh, how about spinning up a nonprofit to do the legal stuff? <laughs> as flat mm. hierarchically as possible. Elected board with short terms. I have, I have no, no idea. idea. And the question stresses me out. <laughs> me too. Yep. Governance. Yeah, that's, yes. Decolonized. Mm -hmm. Small, Small, shared. All stakeholder groups should be represented, community with reps at different levels. Talk to HAOER. Mm -hmm. Some accessible rotating chair. Calling out librarians, faculty, policymakers, students, someone pointing out someone has to lead. <laughs> Great, this is really good feedback. And these are the sorts of questions that we'll be, you know, starting to dive into more thoroughly now that we've been through this conference and as we prepare for next year's. Great, okay. I think this is a good, good overview. And we'll look through these results in more detail later as well. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Transparent, it's an important thing. Yeah, meaningful student involvement. Yeah, some notes on compensation. More chances for input throughout the year, that's good. Great. Cool, okay, I think this is a, a good taste. Uh, how do you feel about implementing a membership-based model of governance? Who might be members? What are your first reactions to this idea? So we've got divergent viewpoints right off the bat. Sure, add structure mm -hmm. versus no can be exclusionary, leaves too many out. Mm -hmm. So we've got some interest and some discomfort. Yeah, still lots of questions, you know, around like what exactly this looks like. We don't have the answers. <laughs> we just want to know what are the initial reactions to this idea. So it looks like some pros and some cons. And the money, the money is an issue. Could it be a sliding scale? Could there be free memberships? Is it exclusionary? People are asking no barriers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very good to know. Confusion about what this would entail. Yes, this is needed mm -hmm. for sustainability versus gut negative feelings. So we're this is definitely an area where there's not a clear consensus about, mm -hmm. about this particular prompt, which is membership-based model of governance. Yeah, yeah need worried about uh, worried about who's in and who's out. Right. Thanks, everyone. Lots of questions with that one. Thank you. 
Let's move on to the next one. Uh, so another, another interesting question we wanna gauge your reaction on. One of the ways that we can keep costs low for attendees is by accepting donations and sponsorships. Who, uh, what should be considered in a donation sponsorship policy? Transparency, no strings attached, openness, code of ethics, no publishers period. Mm -hmm. Transparency I don't know what, looks like the leading theme. I don't know what UNITAR is. Does someone want to fill me in? Oh, I don't know either. Consider what donor expects in return. Donations without strings. Transparency has shown up several times. And then um, question in chat, what do people consider transparency? In this context. Fan of the care framework. <clears throat> Ensuring sponsorship doesn't impact programming. And spon sponsorship does not, oh, sorry, Emily, sponsorship does not equal endorsement. We both saw that one right away. No open, open washing. washing. <laughs> we're just on the same wavelength here. You can tell we've been hosting the late show every night. You can tell we're. <laughs> We're telepathically connected today. Sponsors should allow all materials to be licensed openly. Ethical business practices. Good. This is this is great feedback for um, going forward. Another theme is no strings attached. So we don't want sponsorship to be driving what the conference is. We it sounds like people still want that community driven aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not taking away space from underrepresented groups. Love it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think this is good. Thanks, all. And that looks like UNITAR was United Nations Institute for Training and Research. So thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. What do you think so should be the future of the Open Education Conference? Emily, do you want to take the first crack at this one? Well, it looks like online and virtual, uh, we're right out of the gate. They're, they're leading early in this conversation. Uh, we have EDI and care-centered, perhaps a hybrid of face-to-face -face and virtual. I don't think it should be virtual only. Um, you know, one way to, to consider that maybe would be different years, you know, virtual years versus occasional in-person years. Um, a mixed mode. So thinking about thinking about how a mixed mode could work, what are ways that might work? Broader audience than just OER people. Always community led. Well, I can say I'm very thankful that we were able to pull off a virtual conference and that people are feeling positively, you know, have positive feelings about this virtual format after a week of doing this together because um, you know, this was the COVID pivot and it wasn't our original version. Multiple virtual pleases. <laughs> <laughs> um, keep it going. I like that. I'm glad there's momentum for continuing to move forward. Love it. Students. <laughs> cool. Oh my God. <laughs> we have arrived. <laughs> I love that. 
cool. Thanks all, this is great. Okay, well, I think we can move to the next question. Right. Yeah, I think that might be it. That's all. Okay, well, thanks, folks. That's it for Mentimeter. <laughs> uh, Emily, anything you want to say before we move on to sort of the next next aspect of this? Well, I really just want to thank everyone for engaging with us through Mentimeter. And in the spirit of continuing to build and enhance this um, community and the connections that we're making, as well as continuing this conversation of looking to the future, we're hoping many of you will join us for some breakout conversations now. And I know um, not, not everybody loves breakout rooms. I'm someone who really appreciates having the chance to connect with a smaller group of people. And I think that's been an important part of allowing us to make these connections uh, that we have been making successfully virtually this year. Perfect. Yeah, so at this point, I'll just sort of talk about, you know, what you can expect for the, the last uh, about half hour of the session. Um, so we're going to break uh, out into smaller groups. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, stick around. If not, that's totally okay. Um, but while we're in these groups, we'll have some identified uh, volunteer uh, leaders who know who they are um, and are going to uh, uh, sort of uh, set some ground rules for us. Uh, so Nicole, if we can hop to the next slide. Um, we do have a couple ground rules just while we're in breakout rooms, just to make sure that, you know, we're staying respectful and we're ensuring that everyone can have a platform to be heard. So these are just some things to consider. Uh, if you tend to speak up a lot, do your best to try and make space for others. Listen actively to what other people are saying. Um, take the time to repeat back and clarify language to make sure that we're understanding each other and help make others look brilliant. I think this is really important. Uh, we're all coming from different places, spaces, uh, different levels of familiarity with the open education world, and we all bring uh, our own level of expertise. So uh, very important that we're bringing that out in each other. Uh, and then if we could go to the next slide as well. So what is the future of open education? This is sort of the prompt that we're gonna give you within these, these breakout rooms. Um, while you're in here, your assigned uh, volunteer uh, will be taking notes throughout the session and they'll remind you of that when they go in. So just be aware of that uh, up front. Um, the purpose of this is just to sort of uh, make some, uh, you know, anecdotal uh, feedback that they can give back to us um, and uh, volunteers, if you're able to uh, send those to me in an email afterwards, that would be fantastic. And we'll compile that along with our Mentimeter, da Mentimeter data as well. Um, but we wanna facilitate a little bit of a space for you to, to chat about this verbally and, and chat with some other attendees of the conference and see uh, you know, what everyone thinks. Um, but also use this as an opportunity to uh, build connections. I know it's the last day. Um, I know that this is one of the last sessions um, of the conference, but uh, we can always be networking and we can always be building our community. So uh, make an effort to reach out to somebody in your session uh, and that would be fantastic. Um, let's see, so you're welcome to stay in your uh, breakout room for as long uh, or as short as you like. Um, if you get to the end of the discussion and feel like you're all done, that's great, you're free to go. We'll see you at the closing uh, session, which I think is the next one coming up after this. Um, but you're welcome to stay up until the uh, 25 minute after the hour mark um, when the plenary officially ends. Uh, perfect. And people are okay. bailing on us, but please, sometimes <laughs> okay, I think this is going to actually be a- Yeah, I think it'll be nice. really fun. So if you're, if you're able to, we'd love to have you. And we, we really, really value the feedback from the community. So um, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, any any thoughts, uh, Emily or Nicole, before we dive in? Well, I'm ready to go. I'm looking forward to this. Great. All right. Okay. Should, should I should I send people off? I'm not completely confident 
in my distribution of uh, facilitators. So if you end up in a room with two facilitators, please come out and I will assign you to a new one. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, I'm going to open the rooms right now. The facilitators are going to be sent to their rooms <laughs> um, and then people will be joining you very shortly. And we'll still have big groups. So don't worry. It's not going to be just two people. No, it will not be. It'll be about 10, 10 people per. All right.